Production funding for Flying Squirrels Insider is made possible in part by... Clean water is one of our most valuable resources. Conserving it should be all of our responsibility. Remember every day to make every drop count. Wash full loads, take shorter showers, turn off your faucet. Water. Use it wisely. Let's commit to conserve. And by Medarva, providing mobile vision and hearing screenings to prepare preschoolers for kindergarten. The flying squirrels are in full swing with the first month of the season already in the books. The flying squirrels have already seen their fair share of close wins, tough losses, and late nights at the diamond. A few of our favorite squirrels from 2016 have returned from AAA Sacramento to solidify the roster, and DJ Snelton joins the show, guitar and all, as we debut Bistro Ballads with Sam and Snelton. Squirrels outfielder Tyler Horinzer Beard also makes an appearance in today's episode of Flying Squirrels Insider. And welcome back into Flying Squirrels Insider. I'm your host, Jay Burnham, along with my broadcast partner, Sam Ravitch, as believe it or not, the Flying Squirrels are already through that first month of the 2017 season. We have a lot to discuss on today's show, but first, we'd like to thank our friends from Utility Buddy and the City of Richmond Department of Public Utilities as they share information about Richmond's natural gas safety program. The smell of natural gas is a pungent odor like rotten eggs. If there is a strong rotten egg odor, leave the area, go where the smell is no longer present, and call 911. Also, a big thanks to our friends at Madarva providing mobile vision and hearing screenings to prepare preschoolers for kindergarten. The Madarva Vision and Hearing Screening Program is an educational program with a screening component providing free state-of-the-art vision and hearing screenings to children about to enter kindergarten. Now, speaking of free stuff, my man Sam is going to send it to you. All you have to do is text to win. Scratch off to win Flying Squirrels free stuff. Text FSI to 63975 with mobile marketing services provided by Optin Technologies. Message and data rates may apply. With that said, I will bring in Sam, and Sam has been a bit of a herky-jerky start to the season for the Flying Squirrels. Yeah, it's been interesting, and the fact that we've had some rain the past few days, the past week, uh, the Squirrels have yet to put together that consecutive uh, winning streak that we have been waiting for, uh, but herky-jerky, I think, is a good word for it. Well, let's start with the offense coming to life on the last road trip for the Flying Squirrels in Bowie, the team over four games collecting 39 hits, and that heart of the order really doing some damage. Yeah, heart of the order, and you mentioned the heart of the order. It's going to be Chris Shaw and Miguel Gomez. Those are the guys that have really picked it up offensively. Chris Shaw has really been swinging the, the bat well at the plate. Uh, he's consecutively hit two home runs in that Reading series uh, a, few a few weeks ago. But overall, I think Miguel Gomez and Chris Shaw will be at the heart of the order and providing most of the runs batted in for the team. We've seen it already so far this season. Gomez with a career-high five runs batted in on April 20th at Bowie, including a three-run home run. So those two guys leaned on by manager Kyle Haynes to really provide some of that thump. But one guy that was really getting on base at a rapid clip was Brandon Bednar prior to him being placed on the DL. Hopefully Bednar will be back soon, but what does he provide for this offense? Yeah, but Brandon Bednar does for this team is he provides the offense as well as the on-base percentage. We saw Brandon Bednar with a seven-game hit streak before he was placed on the disabled list, so that is going to be something that they miss. Now, however, Dylan Davis will be brought up in his place. Davis has not been, uh, has, has not played in the infield, so we'll see how he's placed in this lineup, but what Davis does provide is the power. 26 home runs yeah. last year with single A and high A, so that's what Davis does uh, bring in Bednar's place. Yeah, Bednar was put on the DL after leaving the game on April 21st. Hopefully, we'll be back soon for the Flying Squirrels, and that allows them to put more of a prototypical third baseman, a guy like Davis. You look at the home runs, 26 home runs between two levels last season, a third round pick out of Oregon State, but it'll be interesting to see what his defense does because you reference he's been an outfielder his entire career and uh, now being thrust into the infield to move the Giants are trying to make. 
Yeah, it's a different mindset when you play in the outfield. Uh, you, you have different techniques and different uh, reaction times at third base. It's called the hot corner for a reason. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be an adjustment period for Davis over there. It, interesting to see what he will be able to do. Also, the Flying Squirrels bullpen has really been the mainstay for this team at the outset of the season. And Sam, it begins with DJ Snelton, a guy that uh, we'll find out later in the show you formed uh, quite a little relationship with. <laughs> I did. I did indeed. And DJ Snelton, 23 and a third innings without giving up an earned run. That's quite the streak that he has going for himself. Uh, but what he does, he works both sides of the plate, keeps the ball low in the zone, uh, which provides those ground ball outs, which uh, the starting pitching has struggled with as well in the start of the year. Six foot seven, a guy that Oof. comes downhill at you. And Snelton, you look at those appearances and the numbers that we had on the screen, uh, doing it more than one inning at a time, which I think is important for the Flying Squirrels, is that they're able to get uh, more of an old-timey reliever with a guy like Snelton who can give you two, maybe even uh, three innings of, of relief work. Yeah, reliability and consistency is what DJ Snelton gives for you. And that's something that the Squirrels bullpen has been able to provide. The question is going to be how long can they provide it uh, because this bullpen really has been lights out. So the offense is going to have to pick it up and, uh, and start to provide some of those runs. Well, the good news for the bullpen is they've had a bit of rest after some rainouts on the last homestand. If you were in the Richmond region, you know what we're talking about. Pretty much six straight days with gloom and rain. Hopefully that doesn't happen uh, coming up next uh, weekend for the Flying Squirrels. But uh, overall, we had some late nights, some close games as well. A game that ended at just before 1150 uh, in the evening and just before the strike <laughs> of uh, midnight. So the squirrels playing deep into the night. Yeah, I think that was uh, one of the most interesting games that we've seen so far this season. Uh, it was good that the squirrels were able to uh, keep it going as far as uh, you know, the defense goes. We saw the defense commit a few errors coming into the game, uh, but they were able to keep the errors off the board. Unfortunately, didn't come away with the win. But nonetheless, I think they're able to take some momentum going into the next series. And that was a game with over 9,000 fans in attendance and nearly a two-hour rain delay. But at the end of it, people stuck around to uh, see the final out for the Flying Squirrels against the Reading Fight and Phils. Now, for the Squirrels, that bullpen will also get a little bit of a break because the starting pitching is starting to go a little bit deeper in games. Yeah, especially we saw Corey Taylor in the past few days go five innings. That was the longest that he's gone this year. Uh, but I think the starting pitching overall we talk about it as the season goes on. The hitting tends to be ahead of the starting pitching. But what, uh, what is important for the pitching is that they start to catch up. And we've started to see that uh, so far in the season, especially with Corey Taylor. And they're starting to work the strike zone a lot more as well. Uh, so that consistency, that reliability that we talk about is going to be important for the starting pitching going on in the year. And you're seeing longer pitch counts for players at this juncture in the season. So Jordan Johnson in his third start, he went seven innings of work. It was Matt Gage going deeper into games. We had uh, Andrew Suarez throw seven innings of work in Bowie. So when you get those innings out of your starting pitching, that allows your relievers to be a little bit more precise. And that's what we've seen from guys like we mentioned, Snelton and Reyes Maranta, who is a, a show to see when he comes into a game. Yeah, he certainly is. He just gave up his first uh, earned run the past few days. An oddity, huh? Yeah, yeah. really. You're not, you don't see that very often, so you might want to keep that ball yeah. when you, bat, when you uh, <laughs> hit that. But nonetheless, I think Reyes Maranta has been really special for this team. Uh, a, really, a, a pitch that really falls off the table. You talk about the slider and the curveball, uh, but the fastball, it comes back at you at like 96 miles an hour. So uh, Reyes Maranta is going to be a guy we're lucky to have if the season continues. We don't know how long we'll be able to have him, but uh, we're lucky that we do right now. Uh, from the boulevard to the bay, taking a step forward this past week, Christian Arroyo, who turned 21 with the Flying Squirrels last year as he was on his way from a road trip between Altoona and Richmond and uh, began the season with the Flying Squirrels, made his major league debut earlier this week for the San Francisco Giants, so congratulations to him. Yeah, really well, really well done, and uh, it's good to see former Squirrels succeed at the next level. And he was here in studio uh, less than a year ago talking with us and, and talking about uh, being a member of this team. So it certainly can happen and it happens rapidly for some of these players. And in fact, uh, Tyler Beatty sent out a tweet who was also with the Flying Squirrels last year, roommates with Christian Arroyo when he got the call to the major leagues. And he said uh, Arroyo came blitzing into his room and saying, hey, uh, BD, I'm not going to be able to play behind you today because I'm getting a call <laughs> to the big league. So it's exciting to see the relationship between those two guys. Yeah, and it's really exciting to see that call that you get to get called up to the major leagues is once in a lifetime. And you talk to guys, it's such a special call and such a special time in their lives because they've been working so hard to get to that point. The only thing they can relate it to is the time that they get the call when they get drafted. Right. 
So when they get the call up, that's really a, a special time in a player's life. And so for the Squirrels, we'll see who is next on the Boulevard to the Bay series. Guys coming back to the Flying Squirrels will have a, a bevy of roster moves this past week. Include Eliezer Zambrano, who made a brief stay up at AAA, the longtime Flying Squirrel, uh, back in a Squirrels uniform. But it was good to see him get a, a, a cup of coffee at the next level. Yeah, a little bit more than a cup of coffee, yeah. I'd say. He got a few hits and got going up there at the next level, so that was good to see. Also a great defensive catcher, uh, so we'll see him back in, in AA. Hopefully he can help mentor some of the younger catchers And as also well. to bolster the offense, Ali Castillo, a guy that hit over 300 at two different levels, including here in Richmond last season. He makes his way back to the River City for how long, who knows, but he could certainly help out this offense. Yeah, Dylan Davis, Ali Castillo, these guys are going to help get the offense going a little bit more. Uh, and the on-base percentage as well, that's going to be something that we're going to look forward to, to seeing from Castillo. We're also looking forward to having no rain on the next home No rain, Jay. No oh, rain. All right, Sam, thanks a lot. More to come here on Flying Squirrels Insider. Sam later on will sit down with DJ Snelton and strum a couple of verses, also hum a few tunes. But first, there's something different. I don't trust toothpaste. Never have and never will. And I don't know why everyone else does either. Ever get toothpaste on your pants? Ever brush your teeth and get it on your shirt? That dull white stain just never comes out. It never comes out. First, you try a little water and a cloth to see if you can get some to disappear. Nope. Then maybe some soap. No shot. Finally, you just give up and change your darn clothes. Now tell me this. If it doesn't come out of my clothes, then how is it good to stick in my mouth? Toothpaste. Don't trust it, man. I'm here on FSI Field with Flying Squirrels third baseman TJ Bennett. And TJ, thanks for taking the time to be here today. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Before we get to know a little bit about you, I want you to take me through what happened last year in your professional career. It was June. <laughs> maybe mid-June or so, where you made your Flying Squirrels debut in Portland, Maine. Uh -huh. How did you get there, and how did that week unfold for you? <laughs> that was a crazy week. Um, I'm still trying to process it right now. <laughs> um, you know, I was in Extended for a couple of months and just kind of waiting for some stuff to open up throughout the team, being new to the Giants organization. Um, they first sent me to Augusta. I went to Augusta. I, we went on a road trip that next morning, so I packed a little bag for about three days and played in one game in Greenville, South Carolina, I believe it was. After the game, they told me I was going to, to the Richmond team, um, but I'm meeting them in Portland. And I was like, all right, well, I got this bag. Can I get some more stuff? They're like, no, you'll be, you'll be right back. They told me, like, you're just going for three days, coming back. Um, I think it was when Schroeder's wife was having a baby. Yep. So I, I came up to Portland. Played in the first game. Two days later, they tell me you're going to Sacramento. I was like, well, what about all my stuff in Augusta? They're like, we'll send it to you. So I go to Sacramento. I'm there for a few days. Then they're like, all right, you're going to San Jose. I was like, all right. So I think it was like seven or eight days I made it to all four affiliates. <laughs> um, once I got to San Jose, I kind of thought like, all right, I'm going to settle Maybe in here a little bit. Some roots there a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and then... And then about three days, four days later, we're on the All-Star break, and I got a call and said, we got to send you back to Sacramento. I'm sorry. Like, they apologized on that <laughs> one. Um, but so many injuries were happening, and um, the first day I got to Sacramento, another guy got hurt. I was playing, you know, I was there for maybe like a week, week and a half that time, and then finally settled back down in San Jose. So my bags got to me about three to four weeks after I had left. So I was living on a three day bag for a little more than a little more than three days. They're like, well, TJ doesn't have any other clothes. This is yeah. all he has. Huh? Yeah, I was cycling through <laughs> everything, socks, two shirts, you know, just. But you've come to, like, to embrace that, that that's the role that you have right now. And that's the life of a minor league. We're glad you're here in Richmond to start the season <laughs> for more than just a week. Absolutely. Um, but but that's a role that, you, that you've uh, been able to fill. Yeah, man, I, I when it was going on, you, you have one of two options. You can get frustrated and, and be like, man, I want to be one place. Or you can embrace it and just enjoy it and, and 
man, it was cool. I got to see every guy in the system. I got to see all my friends on different teams. I got to experience baseball at four different levels and, and learn a lot and get a lot of experience playing. So when I embraced it, it, it made it a lot smoother. And you were an undrafted uh, player out of Utah, mm -hmm. Utah Utes. And yep. you said, I want to keep playing baseball. So you went into the professional ranks in independent baseball. Well, tell us about your experience there and, and your, your journey to get to the Giants organization. Yeah, man, it's, uh, I'll try to, how much time do we got here? We got three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, uh, you know, it was one of those things, independent ball was never on my mind in college or anything. And, you know, once I went undrafted again and kind of just said, we got a few emails and said, all right, well, let's take advantage of this. So I went out and played a few summers of independent ball. Um, there were some ups and downs in there. Um, after, and that's where you came across manager Kyle Haynes for the first time. That's right. Yeah, I played against him. Um, and and he had he had played for my dad in San Jose actually so we had known each other through that and and just reconnected there and then you know it was after my second independent ball season I kind of um, knew I needed to make some change knew I needed to do some work and I went over to Australia got a chance to play over there and and make some some swing changes and some different mentality changes things went really well I came back from that and. Uh, had a chance to meet Bobby Evans. We connected, and and he gave me an opportunity with the Giants, and it, and it all took off from there. Quickly, tell us about your experience in, in Australia, playing yeah. there, and actually winning a championship in yeah. Australia. Yeah, it was awesome, man. Um, some of the some of the greatest people I've I've met through baseball. Um, it was awesome. I got to live with my dad, who's like my best friend, and um, he was a manager. He he was he was the pitching, pitching coach, coach, I believe, yeah. that year. Um, but we got to you know we got to hang out and in Australia on the other side of the world and had a blast, got to play a ton of baseball. It was just a, a once in a lifetime opportunity and a great experience altogether. Lastly, what have your impressions of the city of Richmond been so far? Man, I love it. Yeah. Besides this rain for the last few days, yeah, but that hasn't been that's nice. been kind of nice actually. I mean, it, it's it's cooling off. I'm sure we'll get plenty of heat coming up here soon enough, but man, it's, it's been awesome. The, the people here have been great. I've gotten to meet some people in the city, some people uh, just with different sponsors and stuff with the team and you know Parney takes great care of us at, at the field and off the field everyone loves the squirrels and it's it's, it's been great man I well, love it it's been great having you and we appreciate you taking the time and we look forward to uh, seeing you on the field this year yeah I love it thank you all right more to come here on Flying Squirrels Insider Here with DJ Snelton in our first segment of Ballads at the Bistro. DJ Snelton, Sam Ravich here. Uh, DJ, before we start to jam out a little bit, uh, when was it that you first started playing guitar? First started playing guitar probably around fifth or sixth grade. My brother played. I always wanted to do everything my older brother did, so I saw him pick up a guitar and my first thought was, I want to do what he does. So I picked it up. Um, I was going to quit after a little while and my dad actually kind of told me to keep pursuing it because he found it to be really good balance for baseball, you know, things off the field. Yeah, we were talking about that, just going to get our guitars. Uh, it, it, for me, it kind of playing sports in high school growing up, it was always kind of a nice escape to have uh, to be able to play guitar and just kind of forget about everything else in the world. Is that fair to say for yourself? Absolutely. It kind of just takes you out of the whole situation, whether you're pitching really well or pitching very poorly. It's it just allows you to stay more centered in yourself and not get so caught up with every outing. Now, we talked about this earlier as well, but what were a few artists that you listened to growing up um, and you were like, I want to play that song by that guy? A lot, a lot of my music growing up was uh, John Mayer. I love John Mayer a lot. I agree. Um, everything that he did was amazing to me, so I just always wanted to play that. All right, we're going to play uh, in just a few seconds, but um, just a few more questions for you, DJ. What, what kind of inspired you to play guitar rather than another instrument? What was guitar that uh, attracted to you? It was just watching people being able to play and watching how versatile it can be. You can make renditions of hip hop songs and stuff like that. I always found that to be cool because I like to find different ways to challenge myself and to be able to take a song 
and then make it your own. That, that was really cool for me. And did you ever think like, hey, guitar might be another uh, possibility if baseball doesn't work out? Had you ever thought about doing it, you know, as a profession? Absolutely. I actually have some friends, uh, Dave and Vince, back home that I do some recording with in Crystal Lake, Illinois. Dave's got a studio that he has in his house, so we always go over to his house and do some recording whenever we can. What was the first time that you recorded a song, and what was that song? Oh, gosh. First time I recorded a song. Well, it depends if you're talking with real recording gear, if you're talking yeah. on YouTube. Uh, YouTube, it was probably just uh, a cover of 3AM by Matchbox 20. Well, let's do that song right now, 3AM by Matchbox 20. And uh, DJ, why don't you count us down, will you? Sounds good. Cold outside, she hands him a raincoat. She's always worried about things like that. She says it's all gonna end, and it might as well be my fault. She always sleeps when it's raining. Says strange and she says, baby, I need three and my must be lonely. But heaven, she says, baby, but I can't help but be scared of it all. Sometimes but the rain's gonna wash away, I believe it. Got a little bit of something, got us better than nothing. And in a color portrait world, she believes that she's got it all down. She swears the moon don't hang quite as high as it used to. And she always sleeps when it's raining. Says strange and she says, baby, I need to hear my must be lonely. Heaven, she says, baby, but I can't help but be scared of it all. Sometimes but the rain's gonna wash away. I believe it. There you have it, DJ <laughs> Snelton. Demonstration time here on Flying Squirrels Insider at FSI Field. I've got TJ over at the hot corner and he's going to show us a thing or two about diving. And TJ, first I want you to take us through what you're looking for when the pitcher throws the ball and how you're reacting defensively before the ball hits the bat. Yeah, so um, so much of defense is actually your feet. And, and third base, first base are a little bit different than when you're in the middle of the infield. Um, I like to get a little bit lower at the corner because balls are coming in pretty pretty hot from from these hitters so my goal is I want to get low and I want my feet to be moving when that ball is being hit I want my feet to already be moving so um, you know I, I look I read the hitters a lot you can as you grow older as you um, advance in baseball you you can start to read hitters um, you can see when they're out front of pitches or they're behind late on pitches so if I start to read that hitter swing opening up towards me, I know that if that ball does happen to be inside, there's going to be a pretty good chance that it's coming my way. So um, as I'm starting my prep step, I'm coming in. I usually want to have a little rhythm. I want my Bounce. glove to be down. Okay. Because if my glove's not down, that ball could just be shot right at me. So I want my first reaction to be my glove and my feet moving. Now you can do that because you're in the Lululemon pants. That's I am right. not, however. But uh, you've <laughs> <laughs> done quite a bit of diving this year. How do you yeah. make that decision when you're going to dive left or right on a ball? Yeah, so reading a ground ball, you, you kind of, it's a split second reaction. Um, ideally, you want to catch everything standing up. So when the ball's hit my direction, my first thought is how can I get to it standing up? Mm -hmm. um, but you, you have to decide pretty quickly, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna have to lay out for this one just to get a glove on it. So those are more... 
those are plays that just kind of happen. The more you play the game, you know which ones to dive for and which ones not to dive for. Um, you know, there's certain times where you have to take a, a different angle, whether it's back or, or forward. Um, but when I'm diving, man, it's, it's a, if it, you take more than one or two steps, you got to be diving after that. And the ball, you, when you dive, you dive, you're horizontal with the ground. Yeah. How do you, what's the landing process for you like? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you build some calluses on your stomach. <laughs> uh, you want to get as horizontal as you can because you want to be covering ground. Right. Um, so, you know, if, if I dive and, and dive upward, I'm going to dive over the ball. So when I dive, I want to be low and I want to get out there so that I do get horizontal and now my glove is closer to the ground to where the ball is actually going to be. And lastly, once you get the ball when you dive, we've got Sam over here at first base. How you do just you hope that you throw it in his relative direction. <laughs> you got to get up. Sometimes you got to throw it off your knees. But you got to get it over there as fast as you can. And you're hoping Sam is a good first baseman. And hopefully and he's going to make a nice play for Defensive me. grade might be a little bit lacking, but uh, the Squirrels have pretty good defensive first baseman. Yeah, we got them good over there. All right, TJ, thanks for being here, man. Yeah, thanks, guys. All right, guys, that'll do it for us. We're going to wrap it here on Flying Squirrels Insider. Big thanks to Brian Dameron and the entire crew here at the WCBE Studios. Until next time, my name is Jay Burnham saying so long. Production funding for Flying Squirrels Insider is made possible in part by... Smell gas? Act fast. Don't just stand there. Leave the area. Get out. Go where the smell is no longer present and call 911. Making you aware, keeping you safe. We're Richmond's Natural Gas Safety Awareness Program. And by Medarva, providing mobile vision and hearing screenings to prepare preschoolers for kindergarten.